Hey, I'm Randy and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high value, hi-fi home theater and headphone equipment. And today is a beginner's guide to powered speakers. They can be super convenient, but also super confusing. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about a beginner's guide to powered speakers. Today's sponsor is the Weem Mini Streamer. For less than $100, you get Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, Apple AirPlay 2, its native app, which brings in almost all of the streaming services known to man. Also has a digital output, also has EQ. You can also use these to make a whole home distributed audio system. The Weem Mini, what's not to like for less than $100? Links are in the description and the pinned comment. Powered speakers. As I said, they are super convenient, but they can be super confusing. You could end up getting one and it just not working for your application. The cool thing about powered speakers is you don't need an amplifier. You don't need a receiver. In some cases, you don't need a phono preamp. You don't need a DAC. It can often be plug and play. However, not all powered speakers are created equally or have the same type of features. So there are things to consider before you click the buy now button. Inputs, sources. A lot of powered speakers come with Bluetooth capabilities right out of the box. And if that's all you need for a kitchen or a den or a second system, then you're set. But if you're looking to add a computer or a turntable or really anything else outside of Bluetooth, you need to take a look at the back and make sure it has the inputs or the connections that you need, especially a turntable, because that turntable may need a phono preamp. You need to check it and see if it has an integrated phono preamp. If it doesn't, then your powered speakers need an integrated phono preamp, or you're gonna have to buy a separate phono preamp. And at that point, we're starting to lose the convenience factors of the powered speaker. So if a turntable is one of the sources you know you may or you know you need to connect to your powered speakers, make sure either your turntable has an integrated phono preamp or your powered speakers have an integrated phono preamp. And I have another video where I talk a lot about phono preamps. I'll put that up here in the Cosmos. You can click and watch that if you want. It may explain things a little bit better. I just did a review on these. These are the Perian Allaires. They do have a digital input, which means it has a digital to analog converter inside. If you are hooking up a computer, you need to have a powered speaker that has a USB connection on the back. Oftentimes, if it has a USB connection, it'll probably also have an optical digital input or a coaxial digital input, which means if you have a CD player or anything like that, that has a digital output, a PlayStation, a television, then you can hook those things directly into your powered speaker. But if you're going to be using this on a desktop with your computer, make sure either your computer has an optical output or the powered speaker has a USB input. Or just cover your bases and get one with a USB input. Analog inputs. I would say 99.9% .9 of all the powered speakers that I have seen, messed around with, or listened to have analog inputs. And that usually is in the form of regular old RCA. You're gonna get a red one and a white one or a 3.5 millimeter input. If you only have a 3.5 millimeter input on the back of your powered speakers, as in the case with the Aperion Allaires, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a Y cable or a RCA to 3.5 millimeter cable. And then you can take anything that has RCA outputs and plug them right into your powered speakers, like a CD player, like a turntable, if it has an integrated phono preamp. So just make sure you have the right cables or you have the right connection options on your powered speaker before you buy now. Bass. Bass is important to me. It may not be as important to you, but for me, I like I like a little bit of junk in the trunk. I like, I like a full bottom end, a little bit of butter in the churn. I'm gonna stop now. Anyway, I like bass. 
So when I bought my first powered speakers, they were the Edifier R, let's see, R1700BTS. And the S stood for subwoofer because I knew, well, I, at least I wanted to give myself the option of hooking up a subwoofer. A lot of the 2.1 systems like the Klipsch Pro Media and I think Logitech systems are all 2.1 they're smart enough to realize that they need a subwoofer because their speakers are just too small to put out any significant or <laughs> enjoyable amount of bass. The same holds true with most powered speakers, especially ones that are about this size. Actually though, ironically, these didn't really need much help on the bottom end. But for me, I would always make sure that you have the option for a subwoofer because if they don't have a subwoofer out, and you're not happy with the sound, you're just not gonna enjoy it as much as you possibly could. So for me, I need the subwoofer out. It's just one of those things I need. Now, if your power and speaker has a preamp out, then you still can hook it up to most subwoofers. But for me, I want that option. And I think you probably should have that option too, just in case in the future, you wanna add a subwoofer, if not right away. Controls. And when I talk about controls, I mean physical controls, but also tone controls or an EQ. Because again, when you get a powered speaker, you're stuck with the sound. So unless it has some type of tone controls, as in bass and treble, sometimes even mid-range, or it has some type of EQ application, you get what you get. And if you don't like it, you're not changing it you may be able to add an external device that has tone controls or has an EQ setting. But if you're just listening to Bluetooth and your application on your phone doesn't have an EQ or tone controls, then you're stuck with what you got. I would rather have something that has tone controls than something that doesn't have tone controls. Even better is something that has an EQ application like the Klipsch 5s. I think there's some other products out there that have EQ applications as well because then you can really dial in the sound. But if you're only listening to Bluetooth, make sure if you think you wanna change the sound that it has tone controls. Also, physical controls. This, the appearing layer. sorry, I'm not picking on you. Feel, probably feels that way. I love the sound of this speaker, but that's just me personally. This speaker is not going to sound great or be the end all be all for everyone. So it's good to have tone controls. This one doesn't have physical volume control or physical input controls, which means in a desktop situation on the fly, you're gonna have to find the remote control. And if you don't have the remote control, you're not gonna be able to change things. That's why I always like having physical controls as well, because chances are, in most cases, this is going to be a desktop speaker. So it's not gonna be hard to reach over and turn the volume up, turn the volume down, turn a little bass up, turn a little treble down, whatever it is you want. So I like having physical controls. If you don't need that, if this is going in a den next to, I don't know, a turntable or whatever, and you always have the remote control, then it doesn't really matter. But if you're going to be changing inputs and this is on a desktop situation, you probably want some physical controls. So if you're getting any value out of this video at all, consider subscribing and please like the video. So when you subscribe, consider turning on the bell notifications. I post a lot of what I would call or what the market would call sales in my community section when products are as low as I think they're going to get. So if you turn bell notifications on, you'll know when those sales are going on and sometimes those sales have a tendency to sell out fairly quickly. So please consider subscribing and liking the video. Cost is the other thing to consider when you're looking at powered speakers. In many cases, you can put together a system that actually costs a little bit less than what your powered speakers are going to cost. And I have a video, it's called uh, putting together an audio file system for less than $350. I'll link that as well. Here's the problem though. That's not very convenient. And if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, you're probably going to end up spending way more trying to piece together a cheap system. It's a cost versus convenience thing. If you don't get the powered speaker that has all the features you want, then you're probably gonna end up buying external components anyway, like streamers 
like DACs, like phono preamps. So knowing what you think you're gonna be using these speakers for and what you may be using these speakers for in the future is gonna help you make the right decision when it comes to picking something that has the features that you need. If you just go out and buy powered speakers and you wanna hook up a turntable to it and it doesn't have a phono preamp, then you're kinda of host. Then you're gonna to have to buy another phono preamp. So what was the point in buying the powered speakers to begin with? Future-proof it. Get something that has the inputs that you think you may want and you'll be fine. Also get something with a return policy from Amazon or somewhere like uh, Crutchfield that has a liberal return policy. So if you don't like them, you can send them back. So whether or not you want to try to piece together a system on your own for less money, and there is some fun in that, but some people don't want to mess with that at all. So powered speakers make sense for them. They just want to put it up. They want to listen to some music. And that is why it's great to be an audiophile right now because there are so many options. Cost versus convenience. That's what it really comes down to. Just do your research and you'll find something that's probably right for you. And I will link two videos to two different powered speakers that I've done reviews on and you can check them out right here. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen maybe through your new powered speakers and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.